Daily Wisdom, Sayings of the Prophet Muhammad, Peace be upon him, Part 3. O God, bless our country with abundance, prosperity and peace. Do not deprive me of the fruits of what you have granted me. Do not test me with what you have not given me. O God, you have created me in the best of malls. Make my conduct equally excellent. Remove from my heart all ill feeling and protect me until my death from the lures of those who would misguide me. What to say on leaving home? In the name of God I depart, placing my trust in God. There is no power or strength except in God. They will be denied God's mercy who do not show kindness to others. Your deliverance or perdition rely upon following. Fear of God in both your private and public lives. Standing by the truth whether it suits or harms your interests. Moderation in both poverty and prosperity. Avoiding addiction to base desires. Avoiding greed and lust. And avoiding self-centeredness. The believers are like a house in which every brick is inseparably joined with every other. They should help one another, one another when in distress. A true believer is one who practices what he preaches. Moreover, he should not cause his neighbor any problems. When joining a gathering, one should not disturb those already seated, and they should cheerfully make room for the newcomer. Modesty is part of a true faith and it encourages goodness. Ponder contentment carefully, for it is a bounty without measure. The Prophet, peace be upon him, recounted the following incident. Once a traveller quenched his thirst at a well, he saw a dog panting out of thirst. He offered water in his moccasin to the dog. God appreciated this good deed of his so much that he granted him deliverance. Those present asked in astonishment whether they would get any reward for the kindness to animals. He affirmed, it's strongly adding that there is divine reward for showing kindness to any living being. If anyone, afflicted with distress, be it physical or financial, does not complain, then God will grant him paradise. The expiation for backbiting is that the one guilty of it should pray earnestly to God that his victim be blessed with God's mercy. Only conduct will carry weight on a believer's scale on the day of judgment. Islam does not allow monasticism. Cursed be the one who mutilates animals. An orphan guardian and I, the Prophet, peace be upon him, will all be as close to each other in paradise as are my two fingers. At the time of creating the universe, God proclaimed, my, my mercy far exceeds my anger. You will be deemed a liar if you report whatever you hear without verification. Someone requested the Prophet, peace be upon him, to give some advice. He advised him, do not lose your temper. When he sought another piece of advice, the Prophet, peace be upon him, repeated the same, do not lose your temper. The worst person is he whom people avoid because of his bad manners. God will deal harshly with him on the day of judgment. The Prophet, peace be upon him, passed by a group of men, including Muslims, Jews and idolaters, and he greeted, greeted all of them with the customary Islamic greeting, peace and blessings be upon you. Do not vie with those who are better off than you. It will help you appreciate all the more what God has given you. A Muslim owes the following obligations to his fellow Muslims. He should call on them when they fall ill. He should attend their funerals. He should pay them social visits. He should greet them on meeting them. He should respond to their sneezing by saying, may God have mercy on you, and he should act sincerely towards them. God is beautiful and he loves beauty. When a baby girl is born to a family, God deputes angels to proclaim, O members of this family, blessings be upon you. Then they take the infant girl under their wings, stroke her hair and say, Here is a weak, helpless being. The one who brings her up will enjoy God's support until the last day. Your best charity is the one given to those dependent upon you. 
Gentleness is never part of anything without improving it, nor is it taken away from anything without debasing it. Remember God and he will remember you. Keep invoking God and you will find him with you. Seek whatever you need only from him. Whenever you are in distress, call only on him for aid. Even if all humanity came together to help you, they could not do so. You would only get what God has ordained for you. Likewise, if all of them intend to harm you, they cannot do so, accepting what God has already decreed for you. Among the believers, the perfect one is he who excels most in good character and conduct. The best one among you is he who is kind to the women under his care. A Muslim who feeds a hungry Muslim will be served with the food of paradise by God on the day of judgment. A Muslim who offers water to a thirsty Muslim will be provided with an excellent sealed drink on the day of judgment. A Muslim who clothes a poor Muslim will be dressed in the garments of paradise on the day of judgment. Do not delay the following. Pray as soon as the, it's time for prayer. Bury your dead as soon as the coffin is ready and marry your daughter as soon as you find a suitable match for her. One blessed with true faith cannot fall prey to greed and miserliness. These vices are incompatible with true faith. A true believer is he who neither vilifies nor curses anyone, nor does he utter obscene or abusive words. Disregard the person who praises you to your face. Anyone who does not reveal the faults of others will enjoy God's protection on the day of judgment and reward God will overlook his faults. If you take advice from others before taking an important step, you will not regret your decision later. Likewise, if you always follow the middle path, marked by moderation and prudence, you will not end up a pauper. That wife can never enter paradise who seeks separation from her husband without an urgent and valid reason. Condemned is he who takes a child away from its mother. The beauty of Islam lies in minding one's own business. You are free to eat, drink and dress as it pleases you, so long as you do not betray pride and refrain from extravagance. You are much influenced by the company you keep. Before you befriend someone, assess his convictions and character. Circumception is from God and hastiness is from the devil. The one who believes in God and the day of judgment should either speak well or observe silence. Virtue consists in your good conduct and evil is that deed which pricks your conscience or that you would not like others to know about. He is not a believer whose neighbour is unsafe from the mischief and wrongdoing. A die-hard hypocrite is one who always betrays the trust reposed on him, resorts to telling lies, fails to keep his word, and uses filthy, abusive language in a quarrel. Beware if you have even one of the above traits, then you will be reckoned as a hypocrite. On being blessed with a child, parents should first give him good name and ensure his moral upbringing. As he comes of age, they should arrange for his marriage, otherwise they will be accountable if he indulges in premarital relations. If your parents die and you were unable to serve them properly, all is not lost. You should consistently seek God's forgiveness for your deceased parents. On the day of judgment, you will be reckoned as their devoted, obedient child. The father who neither buries his daughter alive, as the pagan Arabs did, nor degrades her and does not prefer her over his son, will be admitted to paradise. Spend your wealth. Do not keep counting it as God will give you in unrestricted measure, so do not be miserly. Otherwise, God will not give you abundantly, so give as much as you can. The human heart, like iron, is liable to rust. 
The remembrance of death and recitation of the Quran protects the heart from getting tarnished. I say this with all the force at my command that usurping the rights of these two disadvantaged parts of society, orphans and women, is a major sin. A trader who does not resort to hoarding earns God's mercy, whereas the one guilty of it is accursed. The best worshipper is he who looks forward to excellent recompense from his Lord. God offered to me abundant wealth, valleys of Mecca, overflowing with gold were presented before me however i submitted to him i do not seek wealth rather i prefer to eat one day and to sleep on an empty stomach the next for on feeling hungry i would turn more fervently to you and invoke you you humbly and when blessed with food i would grow more grateful to you god has provided a cure for every disease God blesses business partners so long as they are honest and sincere with each other. However, if one of them starts cheating the other, then God withdraws his blessing from them. That ruler who causes hardship to the public will be harshly punished by God. On the other hand, the ruler who is kind and affectionate to his subjects will be blessed with God's mercy in the hereafter. The wisest among you is he who is ever conscious of death and prepares himself for it. He gains the best of both the worlds, he is honoured in life and he will warmly be received in the hereafter. On the day of judgment, one will enjoy shade and comfort as a reward for one's charitable deeds. God does not look at your faces or your riches, but only at your deeds and your innermost feelings. O oh God, I seek refuge in you from knowledge, which is not beneficial from the supplication that goes unanswered from the heart that does not fear you, and from the self that is never content. While all other human beings will roast in the scorching heat of the day of judgment, the following will be seated beneath God's throne, enjoying a shade and comfort. The fair and just ruler, the youth who spent his time in worship, the one who often went to the mosque to pray, one who loved to meet others only for God's sake, the one who was seduced by a woman of beauty and rank, yet who spurned her out of the fear of God, the one who gave secretly in charity without bringing it to anyone's knowledge, and the one who remembered God in private and cried out in fear of God. O oh God, I seek from you beneficial knowledge. O oh God, forgive my sins, both inadvertent and deliberate. O oh God, help me lead life humbly and cause me to die in a state of humility, including me among those who are humble. O oh God, make me one of those who are pleased with doing something good and who seek your forgiveness as soon as they do something wrong. What should we say when we travel by car, bus or other means of transport? Glory be to the one who subjected this car, plane, etc. to our needs. Otherwise, we would not have been able to accomplish it on our own and we will surely return to our Lord in the end. What should we say when we study? O oh Lord, increase me in knowledge, Quran. My Lord, Forgive me and my parents and all the believers on the day of judgment. O oh my Lord, I seek from you the strength and ability to do good, to shun sin and to help the poor. May you grant me deliverance and have mercy on me. Make me die before you test me. I seek from you the strength and ability to love. You and him who loves you and to prefer such acts that may draw me closer to you. You are not better than any black or white person. If you are a pious, it is this alone that makes you better than others. God is all merciful 
and he showers compassion and mercy upon everyone. He gives abundantly to those who are kind-hearted, but not to those who are stern and unrelenting. Three traits characterize a believer's conduct. Even when in a fit of anger, he does not resort to falsehood. Even when he is elated, he does not transgress the bounds of truth. And when he enjoys power, he does not deny people their due. On being asked whether a desire for good clothes betrays an inclination toward pride, the prophet, peace be upon him, replied, God being the all radiant appreciates beauty. Pride, however, consists in looking down upon others and in opposing the truth. Anyone asked for advice should realize the importance of the trust being placed in him. It is not becoming of a believer to go to bed after having a full meal while his neighbor may have nothing to eat. O oh God, let not a wicked person do me a favor that I may not have to repay in this world or in the next one. The perfection of reason consists of taking steps with far-reaching results, piety in shunning sins, an excellent conduct in promoting noble virtues. The time spent on visiting the sick is credited to one's account as time given over to visiting the Garden of Paradise. There will come a time when a killer will not know why he killed someone and his victim will have no idea why he was killed. It does not benefit a believer to curse or insult anyone. The best Muslim home is the one that houses an orphan who is looked after properly. The worst is one where the orphan is maltreated. Two of you should not whisper to each other in the presence of a third, for it would offend him. A true believer can never be comfortable with cheating or falsehood. Return even the needle and thread that you may have borrowed from someone. Your breach of trust will bring disgrace to you on the day of judgment. Those who dispensed justice fairly will be seated on pulpits of light to the right of God. They will be lavishly rewarded for having acted with justice even in cases involving their family and relatives. He who wants to be fully protected from hell and is keen to enter paradise should breathe his last in a state of faith believing in God and the day of judgment. He should behave with people in the same good manner that he wants them to treat him. The one engaged in remembering God is truly alive. By contrast, the one who disregards his Lord is like a corpse.